Hello and welcome to part 8 of my X-Lights tutorial series. In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to set up your LOR controller uh, and configure it with the x -Lite software. In the description of this video, there is a link to download the x -Lite software. There's also a few other links for a sample directory for my previous tutorials and also a link to my personal display if you'd like to see x -Lites and its capabilities. So I've received quite a few requests from others on how to uh, set up their LOR controllers with the X-Lite software. So I decided to do a separate tutorial just on that. I just want to show you how quick and easy it really is. Um, the first thing we're going to want to do here is set up our show directory if we haven't already. And I just created a quick one on the desktop called LOR Sample. The next step is we're going to want to go ahead and add in our LOR network. Um, in this case, I've just got a standard 16 channel LOR controller connected through the standard USB connection and running the LOR protocol. So this is all just defaults from LOR. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add a USB device now and we're going to select LOR as our network type. And the one thing you're going to want to know is how many channels you've got connected to the network. Um, in this case, I've just got the one controller. It's 16 channels. Um, so I need to know what rate I need to choose. So in this case, 8 channels is 9600. I know that each channel is about 1200. So I need 19200 for my 16 channel controller. This is also going to be connected through my USB serial port. You're going to have to choose the appropriate port on your computer. And I've got a total of 16 channels, so 16 would be my last channel. Now if you wanted to, in a more, uh, if you have a more elaborate setup with a bunch of LOR controllers and you need a lot more channels, you can convert your controllers into DMX mode for higher output on it. Um, that is again more advanced and you wouldn't be setting up a USB device with LOR. You'd be setting up a USB in DMX mode. But again in this case we're just setting up a LOR box that's running the LOR protocol. Again in our USB serial port I've got my rate set and I've got 16 channels. So pretty straightforward. You can go ahead and click OK and you'll see that added in my LOR network right there. Now if we also had E131 controllers or any other network controllers or DMX network universe that you want to add in, you can go ahead and add in as many different mixed types of networks as you want. So now that we've added our LOR box, let's go ahead and test it. You'll see I have my 16 channels. I want to go ahead and output to my lights. And when I hit output to lights, you'll see that the green light on the LOR controller is now solid. So let's go ahead and test strand one. Now in this case, I just have four strands hooked up to my controller. I've got a white, red, blue, and a set of strobes uh, for testing purposes here. So I've got channel 1 selected. I'm going to go ahead and just choose background only. And as I raise the intensity of the background, you'll see the intensity of the first channel, which happens to be white, comes alive. And then I could also test channel 2, which is red, channel 3, which is blue, and channel 4, which are my strobes. So now I can see all my channels are working properly. I've got my LOR box configured. Now I can go ahead and add my elements in under the models. So let's create a new model. And let's say we are doing a wreath. And let's say we have eight wreaths on the house. Um, we're going to just do two of them here real quick. So let's say we've got wreath 
one white. And under type of string, this is going to be a single color white. And I've got one string, there's 50 lights. Starting channel is channel one. And the starting corner doesn't really apply because it's only one strand. We're gonna go ahead and click OK. Now let's just copy that. And we have red, single color red. This starts actually on channel two. Okay, and copy that. We've got blue, single color blue, channel three. Okay, and then we have our strobes, which are on channel four. So we're going to copy this, and I'm going to call this strobe. And this is a, there's actually a strobes option. You also have a custom color option too, if you need. But in this case, we've got strobes and five strobes. And this is on channel four. Okay, so there we've got our first wreath, and we have all four strands connected to that wreath. Now we've got eight of them, so we can go ahead and we're going to have to copy all these over for all eight. In this case, I'm just going to go ahead and copy these for a second one for demonstration here. So that one red starts on channel five. I'm sorry, white started on channel five. Red starts on channel six. Our blue two starts on channel seven. And our strobe two starts on channel eight. All right, so there we've got all of our wreaths, one and two, strands one through four on each wreath. So make sure you get your models in there. So now we want to go ahead and group these together real quick. I'm going to select model groups. I'm going to edit groups. I'm going to add. And this will be wreath one. I'm going to keep this grid per preview. And I didn't name these properly, but I know that the copies are wreath two. So there I've got wreath one update. I'm going to add wreath 2. And update. And we've got both our wreaths in here now. I'm going to close. I'm going to make sure I select those so they show up on my previewer screen. And click OK. All right. So now I'm just going to rearrange these real quick. All right, so I went ahead and rearranged my models um, so they preview properly on my house. Obviously, you probably have a picture of your house back here, and you know you can proportionately size those where you need them to go. Um, but again, just want to show you how to get these working with your LOR box. So now we are all set to actually sequence these lights. Um, Recapping real quick, if we go back to the Setup tab, we added our LOR network through the USB port. We set it our rate, our channels. Then we went ahead and in our layout screen, we added our models. Again, each output on the LOR controller needs its own model. We then grouped those models, and now we're ready to start sequencing. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, just create a new animation sequence just to show you how it works real quick. Um, let's skip all that. Done. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and edit our display elements. We're going to add in our wreath one and our wreath two groups. And again, when we have each wreath group here, we can double click and actually see each strand. 
and control each strand individually if we wish, or we can control it as a group. So I'm going to add some timings in here real quick just to show you an example. If we just say wreath 1, which happens to be the only lights I have plugged in at the moment, I'm going to go ahead and output to lights as we're doing this so you can actually see what it's doing. So just a simple on is going to turn all the lights on. So you can actually go in and if you want to, we'll delete that, uh, just turn on blue at this point, just turn on red over here, turn on strobe over here, turn on white over here. You can go through and do that. Let's say we want this to fade in for five seconds. It'll fade in. That's a little too short. Just one second. And fade out for a second. So you can do simple effects with just each single strand if you wish to go that route. And delete these. Let's say we want it to rotate between the blue, red, strobe, and white. We can use the bar effects up here on the group, and you'll see it'll actually go through. So the nice thing with X lights is being that you modeled all of your strands on your outputs as a and you do defined the color of each of those outputs, X lights knows which color is is being modeled on each strand. Um, so if we wanted, say, just blue lights on, and we had a whole house model set up, we could, say, just select the blue, and we'll drag it to our group, and only our blue lights are going to turn on. Or let's say we only wanted to have our red lights on at that time. We could then select just red. So X lights is pretty smart in knowing the colors, so if you're doing whole house effects or other cool things with pixels, it knows what color the lights are and turns them on at the appropriate time of that effect. Now we could also group all of our wreaths together as one group, and then we could do a chasing effect. Um, I don't have that set up at this moment, but there is just a simple single line we could choose, and we want red, blue, white, and it's going to go through and chase through on those effects. So X lights can be very useful uh, in you know designing your show with different lighting networks, and all those networks can be running at the same time, and it's very it's very easy to get your LOR controller set up and running within X lights. So that's just a quick overview on how you do it. Uh, hope you enjoyed watching the video, and please subscribe to my channel as I will be adding additional videos as soon as I get the opportunity. Thanks again for watching.